right, so I've started the recording. This is our lab for Design 350. It's Monday, November 8th. One thing I want to make you aware of is that we have a holiday on Thursday, so there will be no lecture. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm going to try to find a throat lozenge really quick so I don't totally lose my voice. Okay. So there we go. So um, here's what we got. <clears throat> We're going to do very much the same thing that we just did with the last one. Uh, but we're going to do a two-week project starting this week, starting today. And it's going to be a little bit different. It's going to be a, a local infill. And the purpose is to generate income. Okay, so it's a little bit different. <clears throat> I think we'll find that a good way to generate income um, is through a number of smaller, welcome in Eric, a number of smaller parts as part of the parcel, but it's going to be very much the same thing. As a matter of fact, you'll see that your template that I've given you is the same as the last time. What do you know? Look at that. Um, except I've, I've got to go change these tiny house ones. So I'll, I'll change the details a little bit. But that's the only thing that really changes. Although they could remain the same depending on how you do it. And these you're going to change to be the proper area. Okay, so you're going to take the same template that you had before. And you're just going to tweak it around and rework it a little bit. And that's how it's often done. You've just done one project. Now you're going to change it for another one. And so the idea is that you get the, the feel of how to do it. And hopefully each time you do it, it gets a little bit easier. Okay. And this time we'll probably leave the detail sheets alone and work on some of the water and power and mechanical plans. All right, so let's go over what everything looks like. Uh, for this week, we're doing project two. Its goal for this week is 50% completion. You can use AutoCAD or Revit. I'll post the recordings as we go. There is no lecture on Thursday the 11th. Our hope is that you go and um, take that opportunity to celebrate those uh, who have been in service for the country, because that's what the holiday is. Nothing new to the playlist. It's just going to hold the recordings. But we do have uh, a new project requirement and a new Google folder and a new... Uh, posting to do. So as you're doing this, let me look at the posting so that you can kind of be thinking ahead. So I love this guy. He's solving problems in a new way, right? You could math it out or you could just go try to fit. And um, in my engineering life, let me make it a little bigger. That's always what I was trained. Uh, look at problems from many different directions, investigate them all, and make your work stronger that way. So that's what we're going to do now. So we're going to have Project 1 and Project 2, and they could be two different ways about uh, working with the housing insecurity problem. Uh, but there are going to be two very different ways. <clears throat> and so what I'd like you to do is compare these two ways and and just do a comparison. Oh, this one, duh, duh, duh. And two possible methods that you might use are a Venn diagram. It's a great comparison tool. Or just a comparison chart where you have... Um, uh, basically the two things and you have different categories but I thought I'd show you how to do a Venn diagram there it is 
So literally, you just draw two circles or ellipses or something like that, and you say what your solution number one would be. In this case, you would say foster youth housing um, on a private lot, and this would be what you're going to find is that we're subdividing a lot and providing accessory dwelling units as part of the impetus to pay for the um, medium to larger size units and having a homeowners association to handle all of this subdivision of a lot. So in the middle, you would think about those aspects that are the same, alike, similar, connected to, comparable, common. And you would just make a listing of those. And for this one, you would list those things that are different or unalike from the other one. And over here, the things that are different or unalike from this. And it's really a nice, quick, easy way to make a comparison. Okay, so that's what your problem is this time. I don't know which of you are math people, but I'm more like that dog. I'm just going to try something and see if I can get it to fit. Okay, so so that's your, your discussion work. Okay. Uh, and you'll do 50% completion submittal and put it as a PDF and submit your um, Revit file also or AutoCAD file. So let's take a look at the folder. <clears throat> you have the base file. You have your requirements and lo and behold, there's that letter of intent the cover letter and the letter of support template. And I'll be able to check what you did today and tomorrow uh, so that you can uh, get some feedback on those. But you're going to be kind of, it's, it's the same, um, the same tools just applied to a slightly different design case. So let's look at this design case in this for this one. I'll make this a little bit bigger. So um, in 2015, Sacramento County Community Development Department began, well, they began it before, but I found this very nice um, presentation they made as to preferred methods to address housing areas, housing shortage. Okay, and, and this is one of the reasons why SB9 came into occurrence. Is people have been trying to do exactly what they showed, and there was a lot of uh, NIMBY, not in my backyard, stuff going on. So SB9 gave more impetus to being able to do this. You'll see that the goals mirror the city of Sacramento. And if I can find, I just had an email. Let's see where all my emails are. Um, here we go. Okay, let's see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I have to RSVP to that thing. There we go. And I sent myself number of tents in Sacramento. So here's just another version saying, you know, here's an... Here's another one doubled in the last two years. And they're saying this 5,000 is really probably more like 10,000. Um, whereas San Francisco shows just 8,000. 8, so, you know, these numbers are all not really great. 
to work with, but we know that it's a problem and that people, what can be done? There's, there's the big thing. Okay, so we know it's a problem, but we know that code compliance was the way that local planning groups were able to, for instance, shut it down. Okay, so if, if you had a property and you wanted to put up two or three small accessory dwellings or tiny houses or something like that, uh, the local planning uh, zone compliance could disallow it. So SB9 helped with that. It eased the code compliance requirements, essentially eliminating RD1 and allowing for multiple structures to be built on one lot. And it provides specific allowances to split lots within specific guidelines. Okay, so whereas before, perhaps in an area, um, uh, an RD1 or maybe the RR zoning, uh, residential rural, required at least one acre, um, SB9 took that down to a smaller number so that you could split a lot that was, say, one and three quarters or 1.3 or 1.5 acres. And that would really allow for more to happen. Um, again, um, so property owners with underutilized lots, that's what this, um, let's take a look at this. This is about using underutilized lots. Existing developed sites in an urban or suburban infill. Vital land left vacant during early development. It conserves open space, blah, blah, blah. And it's strongly supported by general plan policies. And so they look then at a number of different things. So I'm going to let you read this over so that you can get a really good idea of what you might like to do with some of these sites that we're going to talk about or this particular site. Um, but we know that if you've got underused lots, uh, you now have the opportunity to build low-cost housing in a matter that's fully integrated with the AFFH of Sacramento County. Okay, so as an example, maximizing the number of accessory dwellings that can be placed on underutilized lots, property owners can develop actually significant income stream while still meeting low cost housing objectives for the region. So that's kind of cool. You know, the neighbors might be upset if you put up a three story condo uh, with nine units, three on each floor, because then you get things like, well, you're peeking into my backyard and you're blocking my son and it doesn't look right in the neighborhood. So the whole goal of this is to make it easier to use underutilized lots, uh, not going for broke and just really mashing everything in there, but trying to find some middle ground. So here we are back to 4632 Winding Way. You may already have, whoop, let's take care of this. You may already have the property lines drawn, uh, which saves you a little time, or you can go in and find it and do it. And so in this case, the property owner wishes to develop an underutilized lot and they want some income generation. 
um, and in a number of ways. Um, so, so that's that's um, how can you generate income from these lots? So, uh, at the same time, they want to support the AFF. H goals of the regions. So the trick is, can you generate income and still make money? Current zoning is RD2, and the lot does contain two small residences that are, that are already there. <laughs> there are two residences, and there is one accessory dwelling unit. But by splitting the site into three lots, it could take up to six duplexes and three accessory dwelling units. So you can see there's opportunity here. So in this case, the project wants to split the lot into three lots, each of which will have a main residence between 1,000 and 1,600 square feet and each one having an accessory dwelling unit of approximately 200 square feet. In addition, the, the homeowner association will be created to care for common areas. That's things like roads, utility in easements, a small community garden, and the existing owner plans to remain in one of the residences on one lot for at least five years. Okay. And this will essentially double the number of units from three to six. Instead of two primary residences, there will be three. And there will be an additional three accessory dwelling units, okay, one of which is already existing, okay, and the accessory dwelling units are intended to be priced in a way that will provide the income stream to cover homeowners association costs. Now, how is that income generating for the current owner? The current owner has one of those sites. They want to split that into two lots, and they would remain in one, rent the other. They're already doing that. They get income generation. Uh, but they would also generate a one-time income from the sale of the new lot and they would have two accessory dwelling units to help pay for the, um, the homeowners association dues. So they're going to remain, keep one, improve the site, sell a lot, maybe even sell the lot, uh, maybe even save that lot and create one more rental unit. Okay, so there's lots of ways that it can go, and you'll see that as part of the um, letter of intent, as we're preparing that, we'll do some calculations on that later on to show different opportunities for income generation. So that's the plan. Three lots, three small residences, and three additional small dwelling units. And those can be, um, you know, on a foundation. They can be on pier blocks. They can be tiny houses. Um, we're not setting that aside and making a requirement out of that yet. Um, and if wanted, uh, each of those residences, if you do the parking right, could also have what they call a junior dwelling unit 
where you t uh, take the garage and um, turn it into a dwelling unit. The two existing residences do not have garages, but the new dwelling unit could, so you could even do a little bit more with that. So there's a lot of opportunity on this lot to do some neat work and still make it fit into the neighborhood. So what do you need? You need your letter of intent. You have to show that there are local services available to support this new development. You have to have grocery stores and transportation and gas stations and all that kind of stuff nearby. So you have to identify again what's available and what's lacking. Similar projects that have been approved, well, fortunately, you can look at the next series of lots right to the east, and you can see that that set of lots was subdivided already. So you can just point next door and provide evidence of ability to sign the project, in other words, the homeowners association, for a minimum of five years, and that would have a five-year spending plan uh, that shows that you have association dues that can cover that for five years. Now, in reality, um, the state law requires a homeowners association to have a 20-year plan. But, but those are complex, and so we're going to go with a five-year plan. Same thing, letter of support. This time, local neighborhood groups or residences. There's a church right next door. I can't imagine that they would have a problem with this, but you would get there okay. There's um, some sort of a market or something, a small light commercial behind. And then there's residences right next door. Uh, so you would want to make sure that any of those groups are not going to be adversely impacted, particularly with traffic. Okay. Um, I don't think there will be more traffic than this than the church generates, but you would want to think of those. And then provide any rental agreements or CCNRs that would be required of the homeowners association members. And there you could think about things like oftentimes in community gardens, each person of the association is required to pay a certain amount for tools and uh, fertilizer and this and that. If you're going to put up solar, you're going to want that. Uh, sometimes you're required to go water the plants once a week, things like that. So you can think about those things, okay? And your, you have your 14 um, uh, drawings. That's what this, um, I'll call that this, your drawing packet. A little bit better, okay? So that's what we've got up for this one. Do you see how it's much the same as the other guns? So do you guys have any comments or questions about what you'll be doing on this one? Nothing yet then, I see. Okay, so that's kind of cool. It, I, I'm hoping it's straightforward. And then we're going to do another one that, you know, in two more weeks, we're going to do a third one that's very, very similar to this. So, so let's look also at use this city of San Francisco, uh, a city of Sacramento, um, urban infill also. And this one is really cool. There's a lot of good work on here that you can use when you refer to the need in the um, in the um, um, letter of intent. And look, they've got, you know, 
Look, they want to build 23 housing units within the next 20 years. Well, that's actually not very much. I think they've, they've said that it actually has to be much quicker than that. Um, but this is probably just counting urban infill. So as you do your letter of intent, you would say, look, it's a big goal of the city of Sacramento right there. And they are looking for opportunity sites. So when we look at this area, we've got 1.3 acres that basically has two single family residences that are fairly expensive. Uh, and you have an opportunity to make uh, four more that could be considered low income while still remaining with those two large ones. So, and, and maybe even more than four more. Um, so, uh, so there it is right there. Targeting empty or underutilized lots. And that's within the city. This one is looking at infill home designs. They're looking at providing sewer credits. They're looking at fee deferrals. And a lot of the zoning code updates. Uh, and a lot of these are in place. Um, and so you would, you would look to see if any of these are in place. And then, you know, they're looking at doing public investment. How do we make an area look a little bit better so people will want to go there? Um, you know, they're trying to finish building out some planned communities that didn't get finished. Uh, and look, a lot of this is about streetscape improvements because, you know, a lot of, a lot of people don't want to do infill or, you know, the next, the next street over is where the, um, where the housing starts and there are these big, ugly, treeless um, corridors that are just awful. You know, turn that into that. And that's not a huge investment, right? That, that's not a massive investment to do. Uh, in our particular case, it's already pretty well done. But there are identifying areas for these to be done. Okay. <clears throat> and you can look over here. There are... Um, I thought I saw on here that there was, that, that, that one of these areas was the Arden Arcade, but it looks like that's not on this group. Uh, but again, you can see, you know, they're really trying to identify sites and, and show how things can, you know, look, if you were able to do some connectors and fix circulation. So these are some of the ones that they're <clears throat> really looking at trying to, to do. Okay. So there you go. That is, that is your kind of goal is to put this all together and do this. So let's take a look really quickly since we're able to. I think you guys all know how to get to the SAC County Parcel Viewer. Actually, let's look at it on uh, Google. It'll be a little easier. And you guys can get some ideas. So like Eric, in this case, if you're interested, you would want to um, look and see how you can work this site 
from the landscape point of view, not as a detail, but as the other. So let's take a look at this. So this is what's here now. And essentially, you've got this building and this building. Those are actually two residences that are on the site. And there's a garage. This was a garage, and it got turned into a residence. And then they rebuilt this small garage. So that's now an accessory dwelling unit. So we've got one, two, three, and you've got a pretty nice area up here <laughs> that you can really do some work with. And if you think about how this might be split up, this area up here, um, the people that live here and live here love the fact that they're sort of neighbors, but they have all these trees. And they really like the separation from Winding Way. And you can see that this used to be one, two, three, four. Uh, this used to be one lot right here. And you can see they put this thing in and put in all of these. So this one was done quite a while ago, I think. Right? And, you, you know, so some of these have already done this in a fashion. But if that's kept and that's kept, that leaves you a front area for one more lot. Potentially another small area for um, accessory dwelling units. And a front area to maybe leave as a tree area with a small community garden in the middle of it. So there's a lot of opportunity for this. And when you do your site plan of the existing, you know, you'll have lots of opportunity to play around and see where you want to put stuff. Now, one thing to notice, there is a set of power lines that run along here. And that is on the property. Okay, it's on the property. Okay, you can't really see it, but it runs along here. So the idea is that you could have an easement and think about adding your sanitary drain and your water along an easement that could also be turned into a road. So you could turn this along here potentially into a road, demo this, maybe put your community garden over here and use a small area over here for your third, uh, the, the back side of this lot essentially as your, as your third residence. Or you could just split these up so there's a lot and a lot and a larger front lot with an area set aside for community garden with the road over here. Or you could just ignore that and leave this road system as it is and put a third residence here. <clears throat> okay. So it's up to you to kind of kind of cut and paste and figure out, you know, how you might want to adjust these lots size-wise and area-wise and figure out if you're going to set aside some portion of one of the lots for community use. Kind of a fun little site, actually. Or if you want to demolish one of the buildings and rebuild it. It seems like that's not very, you know, eco-friendly to demolish an existing residence. 
Eric, what do you think about, you know, as as the landscaper, uh, what what are your thoughts kind of on this one? Well, they're not going solar right now, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, I would have to just play around with the idea of, you know, I don't like to get rid of more trees than necessary, um, right. you know, because uh, they do provide, you know, shade is good uh, as well. Uh, but you could definitely use that as a screen uh, that works really nicely. So right. I would just have to figure out which ones make sense and yep. maybe pull, pull a couple out just to create space for the actual right. property. You know, and if maybe you took this one out, that, you know, I don't know how big, big that is, but that's a pretty good size community garden right there. If you were to yeah, pull that, that would, one that out. that would open that up real quick, yeah. Right. And if you did want to use solar... You could pull this one out and put a community solar microgrid right there, right? Um, yeah. And then, you know, you could probably leave a lot of this and a lot of these ones that are existing here. Um, probably pretty judicious on how you remove the trees. And then, you know, whether this is a, a roadway to keep, it's nice because it's already there. Um, yeah, I think it's about working with what you have and trying to minimize the actual, you know, uplifting of everything because that's when it gets expensive. And as you say, it's not really good for the environment either. Right, right. And then, um, you know, traffic wise, you see that there's going to be a lot of traffic here anyway. So putting the residents somewhere away from this small traffic area would probably be a good idea, right? Which is why this is probably over here like this. So yeah, some kind of cool, cool stuff that could be done. Now I do know that this is a high area here but there's a lot of drainage off of this site onto here. And this gets a little swampy back here. So some sort of a vegetated swale or infiltration trench back here would be a good way to, especially since this is draining off of a um, tarmac, it would be good if this was a, a swale or something that could treat some of that crud that's coming off of there. That's so, unfortunate. Yeah, but you know, swales are good at that, right? You know, there the you can put in plants that break down the oils and the soot and you know just that kind of stuff. And of course, you know, you could put up so there's no debris, but the water is always going to be, you know, taking crud, um, stuff like that. The other thing that one of our students in the past did is they, they actually created the garden over here and they made a walkway and an access. They took this set of trees out and encouraged the church to come over and use that they sort of said well we'd like to work with this church and offer them that garden space if they would use it to distribute to their church members because most churches have a distribution network for support of people in need um and so, so that was another thing that another, uh, I've, this is the second time I've used this site. And that was a real interesting one. And then another person did it back here because they have this little walkway over here. So another person took this tree out and made a little area right around this parking and put up a fence with a gate but one that would be open to the to the church users right there because they didn't think they thought that having the community garden up here would have too many people um 
either just taking the stuff, which is not a huge deal, but they thought it might become a camping spot. And they didn't want that. Um, so anyway, there we go. A lot of neat ideas for this site that could be done. And um, I do know that, you know, Professor Welch used to own this site. And um, when he was selling it, he actually did use, uh, he provided the, the concept um, layouts to the new purchaser. Says, hey, you know, and if you're interested, here's some cool stuff. And they said, wow, this is cool. And that, that helped kind of like, you know, get the price he wanted for it. So these, this is a real place. Another thing that you can think of when you're looking at this is um, um, how can you meet other SACOG things like um, can you put in a microgrid or a cell phone tower that would, a 5G tower that would help tie in this whole area and you can get money off of it. Especially if you put it on like this back corner over here where it's not really going to be seen. I don't know how close or how far away it has to be from power lines. Maybe it's not appropriate to do but that would be of of interest but with the power lines here potentially you could create either a micro grid or a nice station that would um, feed back into the local grid and so I think this since this is south down here and you want solar panels to face south this might be an ideal place to put up covered parking for um, covered parking with some solar on top of it right there. So just some ideas to kick around. You guys got it's any a other? A lot less work. A lot less work because the, the south ones, those trees look like a lot of work. Yeah, these, one, these ones, getting rid of these, that's, that's a lot of work and it is getting rid of a lot of shade, right? Yeah. And yep. and a lot of CO2 generation and all that stuff. Um but but you know, this is a nice spot. This is a nice spot. This is just asking to be made into a small garden. This is asking right up here to be made into maybe a um uh what do they call that where you uh, a park and ride where somebody, because there, there is a bus stop near here, not too far away. Let me look for, um, well, I thought there was, um, maybe it doesn't have a, Maybe it doesn't. I thought that there was a bus nearby, but maybe there's maybe there's not. Um, so that, uh, somebody had proposed that, so I don't know if that's, uh, where did I just go? I lost myself. Where did I get lost? The church is to the right. Oh, there it is. Thank you. Um, so potentially that's not that great of a one, but um, this little area here could also be cleaned up and used for whatever, right? Um, so there we go. Any other questions or comments before we log off of this one? All right, then there we go. That is, I'm going to turn off the recording.